Hello, everybody. It is the one you've been waiting for. Welcome to Railfan TV. Tonight's preview is Spirit of Steam. Uh, hello, Matt. I can tell. I can look up and say that you're very excited. Oh, I'm so hyped. And Jamie, I've been so wanting to show this off. And Jamie, super excited as well. I'm looking in the wrong direction. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Totally I've got two, two proverbial kids in a sweet shop here. We cannot wait <laughs> to show you uh, Spirit of Steam tonight for the first time. Uh, Matt promised, though, to begin with, what we would do is, uh, is we would do a, a PowerPoint presentation just to tell you how we've got to this point. Um, I thought it'd be good to just summarise what we've covered, you know, the journey yeah. so far. We, we said we said we'd do some gameplay tonight. But what we actually meant was PowerPoint. Yeah, PowerPoint, uh, PowerPoint. So I'm just joshing with you. Don't worry. We will get into the gameplay nice and soon. No PowerPoints tonight. As much as we tried to prize it from Matt's dead hands, uh, it's no fun. See, I've got the PowerPoint already to go. This is such a disappointment to me. <laughs> uh, okay, so Spirit of Steam is of course available to pre-order now on Steam. Uh, but before we, uh, we will have a quick introduction. Before we get into the uh, the gameplay side of things, so uh, Matt, do you want to just give us a quick summary of Steam, uh, where we're at with things, and what players can expect to see tonight? Right. So, what you're going to see tonight, we are going to drive the Jubilee from Crew to Liverpool Lime Street. Uh, you will see the locomotive. We'll give a good tour of the Jubilee. Look at the Mark Ones. We'll be looking at the stations along the way. We'll be um, uh, looking at trains as they go by. So, um, if we see the ATF, then we'll we'll point one out and say, "Ooh." But we're going to do another stream when we focus on the ATF. So that's not today. It's all about passengers and the Jubilee. We'll look at passengers as well. The uh, period Ooh. passengers we have on the route. Yeah. Um, we're, we're not going to do any training or scenarios or anything like that. We just want to get in, drive the train, and because uh, I know that's what you want to see. Um, and um, and that's kind of where that, that's what we're going to be looking at tonight. Yeah, we will do some, because we are aware that these are slightly different operationally to perhaps all of the other uh, locos that you will have experienced in Train Sim World 2. Uh, so we will be doing some uh, educational videos to try and help out uh, anybody who is new to Steam or wants to try it for the first time in Train Sim World 2, which is obviously everybody, but some people have more experience than others. So uh, we will do some educational stuff as well. We won't, we won't perhaps quite do that tonight. We will probably save that for a future uh, piece of content. We want to show you the good stuff tonight. So, all right, without further ado, Matt, Let's take it away. Oh, I'm gonna... Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's just like, hey, That's better. Right. right knock off the camera. They don't want to see us. <laughs> they are not here to see us. You know. That's what. That's what HR keep telling me anyway. It's, uh, um, <laughs> right. Okay. So before we get into the game, because you know we need to just delay a little bit, and build up some frustration and excitement. A quick overview of well, the, the wider content. So training. So the um, Liverpool crew route introduction. Route introductions on this route are different to the format you've seen before. We will not be teaching you to look up, look down, look left, and look right. Thank and, goodness. And many other things. We are <laughs> listening. We It's driving us bonkers as well. And um, going forward, they will not be present. Um, so do the route introduction. It's actually probably less than 10 minutes now. Um, it's a really simple introduction and it's just a nice way opener for the route. ATF tutorial, semaphore signaling tutorial. These are not the signals that uh, that you are that you are looking for. Uh, refueling introduction, how to put coal and water in, and the Jubilee tutorial, uh, which does basically what it says on the tin. Uh, scenarios, we have the bovine blockage with cows. Um, uh, this is a run with the Jubilee and uh, is, is quite amusing. Um, sorry, sorry. sorry oh, about that. Dear. I think you might have skirted over that a little bit. Are these the first cows in Train Sim World 2? No, but these are the most detailed oh. cows. And these are animated okay. cows as well. So, yeah. you know, the, the gameplay team really and the art team combined rolled out the uh, the full works to get us some um, animated cows in the way. Um, so, uh, yes, good fun. Uh, tables have turned is um, about, um, uh, I think, a loco changeover at Lime Street. It's uh, using the turntable uh, and picking up a train. No, this is a crew. Sorry, this is a crew. Uh, there's four timetables. Time, time I 
I'm going to say timetable and turntable in all the wrong places tonight. Just get <laughs> used to it. Okay, figure it out. All right. Really reliable rescue is uh, an ATF where you go and pick up a broken down train and carrying it on. Time for Scouse is uh, probably one of my favourite scenarios in here. Actually, it's uh, but it's not because it's it's sort of shunting around a little bit. You prep a train in um, Edge Hill Shed, um, and then you take some coaches down to crew for another train. Then you turn your train again, and then you um, you bring it back up to Edge Hill. So it's it's all lots of navigating around um, in the yards and so forth. Huge yard at Edge Hill. Worst winter of all is really quite challenging, uh, as the name might imply. And um, we've got uh, some cool stuff going on that will that, that will probably mean you play this one more than once just to finish it. Um, it's good fun. Moving around the Mersey is an open sandbox scenario, so you can um, you can uh, uh, navigate around. I think it's Edge Hill. Um, or speak. I don't know where that icon is over there. Edge Hill. It says Edge Hill. Let's, let's look what it says on the screen. So this is uh, basically just a thing where there's a bunch of trains, a bunch of wagons, and you just do what you like uh, in, in that area. Right. That's the scenarios. Services. As you can see, we've got the ATF, got the Jubilee. 36 services with the ATF, which includes um, engine prep moves, uh, coupling up to cars and then taking them where they're going to go. So you look at me saying cars for the British content. Nice. Well done, Matt. Um, and then we've got the Jubilee with its 98 services. The Jubilee services are a, uh, a broad mix. Uh, let me just bring this back, put some clouds on, of... Um, servicing moves at uh, between Edge Hill and Lime Street. Um, the... Uh, stopping local services between Lime Street. That these ones that say they're going to Chester, which are basically Lime Street to Runcorn or Runcorn to Lime Street. So you'll stop at most stations along the way. And then you've got um, services like uh, this one, which is Lime Street to Euston, which is an express. There are also a couple of um, named services in here. If I can find one, I'll show it to you somewhere down here. Um, the Manxman is a is a named yeah. service. So that's an express Euston to Lime Street service. So you're it's it's a non-stop run from one end of the line to the other. Uh, we're not going to do that one today because uh, it'd be nice to stop somewhere at least. And you know, because there is a thing on the bingo sheet for tonight about me, you know, stab coming in with maximum breaks. So if we do a, slice, a route where we don't stop, then I can't possibly deliver on that experience. <laughs> so yeah, just just quickly, Matt, before we move on, uh, we're on we're on Xbox tonight, aren't we? We are on Xbox Series uh, X uh, tonight for this one, um, and I think for the next one we're looking at PC. Cool. Uh, and again, whilst we're on the subject of timetables, uh, layers, uh, route or services on other lines, what's the current situation with that? Right, so there are no updates to any other routes to put um, the uh, trains on any other lines at all. Um, it's something we have a desire to do, and it may be something Prez crew do um, later on, but they don't expect it at this point. Um, the... Um, uh, the, the layers on this one, there are no extra layers on this timetable. Uh, there's not really much that's appropriate for this route, to be fair, to be honest. So we haven't we haven't put any layers on this route. Cool. Okay. Uh, but yeah, possibilities for, for <coughs> the future. Uh, Nigel says, will it work on an Xbox One? It will indeed, but the timetable you get on the Generation 8 consoles will be cut down. It shouldn't be cut down in the terms of volume of services, but in more in the variety of stock. There are memory problems um, otherwise with this on the on the machines that have got less memory, because being blunt, crew is a beast, as you'll see in just a minute. Right, welcome to the aforementioned crew. Uh, if there's any issues with volume balance, just let me know. Uh, I'm going to get the doors open. And the first thing I'm going to do is just pop into the map so that you can see. Log in. Wait, three words. There you go. Uh, let me just. Uh, I'm going to turn the volume of the game down briefly now the safeties have gone off. Um, but this is crew. And um, it just gets worse the further you go down, to be honest, uh, yeah, until okay. eventually it, it goes back it to is. being better again. So yeah. crew is an absolute monster. Um, and uh, then we head north. Um, and we continue heading north. This is West Coast Main Line. Uh, we're continuing to go, continuing to go, continue. Eventually, we hit Weaver Junction, which is not here. This is the Cheshire Lines Committee. Uh, no, that isn't the Cheshire Lines Committee, is it? I don't know. I'm talking out of my backside. It's fine. Ignore me. Weaver Junction! Moving along here, and this is where we turn off. So West Coast Main Line carries on up there. We're not going that way. This is the world's first flyover junction. Exciting! You can drive it. It's an uphill climb as well. It's quite a steep uphill climb up here. Uh, we'll challenge your driving. Uh, we head up up here. Um, 
and uh, we've got facilities. You got run. This is run corn here, um, and then you've got run corn viaduct, viaduct, which is that impressive bridge. We'll get to that on this journey. Going across down here into Ditton Junction. This is the uh, sleeper factory. Again, we'll see that as we come across here. We get to speak monster number two. Wow, it's <laughs> so much. You know, it shows how much there was then and how much has actually been taken away. Well, yeah. Look so, at this on yeah. Google. It's probably four tracks or something daft. Uh, but also, people have asked. I noticed some of the questions. Will there be any stock in the yards? And yes, there are stock in the yards. It's a it's a compromise. It's reasonable um, rather than being empty. Probably not as full as it would be in real life, but um, it's got plenty going on. This is the engine shed, which is fully usable along with coaling and refueling and so forth. As we continue up from Spark, this is the Cheshire Lines Committee. Um, uh, this, as we continue from Speak, we go up here to Edge Hill. Monster oh, number sucks. three. Oh. This is Edge Hill Engine Shed. Um, this bit here, actually, this just inside this corner, is all that's left, really, of Edge Hill now. This is it. And then everything else you see here doesn't exist anymore. Um, oh, and it's all on different nice. levels. Um, so the 8F trains, your freight trains, are generally going to be pulling car wagons from up here. And you'll be going all the way around here in tunnels, over bridges and all sorts of things. Big climbs to make it up onto West Coast Main Line. Sorry, onto the, the line down to uh, uh, crew. So there's, it's quite a fun ride, actually. And we'll probably do that on the 8F str uh, stream. So yeah, we continue. Definitely. This is Edge Hill Station. Um, and uh, and then as we continue, we've got the. This is the famous, you know, the, if you know Lime Street, this is the uh, the big cutting viaduct, and this will be the last thing we'll be looking at as we when we arrive. And this is Liverpool Lime Street itself. So and yes, it's got the turntable just in here, along with watering and so forth facilities as well. So there's lots going on. Big old. Uh, it's only 35 mile route, but as you can see, about 80 trillion miles of track. I was going to say, how much? <laughs> how many miles of track is that, though? Don't very much. Look at the look at Edge Hill and Speak and all of the three monsters yeah. that you highlighted just there. It's basically all of the track in nice. the country. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so Matt, we'll do we'll do a little introduction on how to operate the loco. I think in the next live stream because we obviously want to get to the interesting, good stuff. Well, I mean, obviously this is interesting, but they're going to kind of show as much of the route as we can today. We'll do a little bit more of an introduction to actually building out the locos, uh, or, or sorry, operating the locos in the next live stream. But what are you doing? Narrate yourself through it. Right. So I'm just I'm just show, I'm showing off the fire the firebox now because I think the, the team did a really great job of that. Uh, and uh, but we'll leave that closed. We don't need it open. Uh, I'm going to sit in the driver's seat. I put the reverser forward. I'm just using D-pad up down to do uh, to do that one. Uh, I'm just checking the cylinder box. You you may have noticed in the bottom left corner there is a new HUD thing. Um, yeah, and yes. Let me just talk Go you back. through what you're seeing here. Now I can't mouse over it, but the top big circle is the boiler pressure, which is also seen up there. Up there. The um, let me put the HUD back on the screen again. I'm not going to be on time for this service, apparently. Um, <laughs> the bottom, smaller circle isn't displayed in a gauge on the cab. In fact, a lot of steam locos don't display this. Some do. This is the steam chest pressure. And this is useful in ways I will show you when we get going. The icon at the bottom there is the cylinder cocks, whether they're open or not. And yes, you probably will find yourself getting filtered a lot. If you type that on forums and things, I suggest you say cylinder drains. It gets filtered less often. Right, so you can operate the uh, operate the cylinder co uh, cylinder cocks, and you can see that the icon changes to say whether they're open or whether they're closed. Um, the two bars on the left hand side are the blower and the damper. Uh, your blower is over here, so I can put a cracker blower on there, and then just over here, um, I turn the torch on. You can see the dampers. So I'm going to open the front damper, open the rear damper, and you can see when we get back onto them, you see the HUD you can see that we've now got the uh, the stuff showing up on there. So this is the HUD. In the center of the boiler pressure, in the top, um, you'll see that occasionally there's what looks like a bit of an A or a bit like a V. That's an up an arrow and a down arrow, okay? That's telling you if the boiler pressure is going up or the boiler pressure is going down, okay? Cool, right, now, where are we? Oh, another thing, um, locomotives, steam locomotives, generally don't have a cab light unless you leave a lamp on the tender and you use that. Okay. Oh, so, that's that's really good. I like that. It's like uh, that. It's, it it's cute. Yeah, it didn't really come in until Locos had what we call like steam generators, didn't they? So you had electric. Some sort of standards later on had that, but early days it was. Yeah, it was a lamp on the back or the firebox doors open. There is also something else that you are missing in this train, 
because they didn't have them back here. What am I missing, Jamie? A speedometer. A speedometer. So I didn't ask me that question. Yeah. <laughs> there yeah. is no speedometer in this train. Welcome to 1958 steam locomotives. <laughs> <laughs> how do you tell yeah. how fast you're going? Yeah, look out the window. <laughs> yeah. Literally. It was done I'm by checking. Kidding. Yeah, it was done by checking sleeper speeds, wasn't it? I think. Or some, there's all sorts of things. I think some certain drivers had different things that they felt comfortable with. So, um, yeah. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get going, um, and so I'm going to. Uh, brakes to release I'm going to push this open now the you can see the uh, this is your um, your brake gauge here uh, so what I did there was I operated the combination brake and I operated the large ejector to create the vacuum so it's using steam from the boiler to create a vacuum to release all of the coaches um, it takes a while because vacuum brakes frankly are rubbish um, as they are in reality this is why air brakes are used today um, you'll find this is even worse when you've got big freight train. Um, so we now close that off again and uh, we're all good. We've sealed that. We've got a signal. Drains are open, so we're all safe to proceed. So, so um, Matt, just quickly before we get started, you might have noticed we have a friend in there with us. Probably quite an important friend in there with us. Yes. This is our AI fireman. This is our AI fireman. And this is a point where I, um, I want to be really clear about something. The um, The experience of steam that we are shipping um when is it shipping next week isn't it 31st 31st 31st, 31st. Not, far. not far so the experience of steam that we're shipping next week will not include manual firing this is about the driving experience and what's going on there so all of the stuff related to firing is going to be done automatically um we are still developing the manual firing stuff and what's going on there and we'll give you an update about what's going on there. So we are not ignoring it, forgetting it. We just want to focus on priority and we definitely want to give the manual firing side more time because you know what? Turns out injectors are really complicated things in to, to model in physics. Um, and uh, we want to get that right. So this is, this is so I want to be really clear, driving experience, you will not be operating injectors and putting coal in. That will all be done automatically. Uh, now, what I don't think you're going to see tonight is the brilliant animations on this fireman. Um, so we'll hopefully get to show you that next week. Um, but the fireman has got some really cool animations where he shovels coal in and looks out and supports you by looking up and, and uh, detecting things going on. I think we should just get driving. You know what? Yep. Babbling yep. on for so long. I'm getting yep. bored yep. of hearing me, that's for sure. <laughs> and we'll do some exter we'll do some external uh, showing of the, of the when we when we get started and when we start stopping at the stations we'll do some external exploring of the loco as well. And the as soon as it stops blasting the safeties. I will turn the volume back up. Here we go. Spring the cutoff back as we accelerate so we make more efficient use of the steam. Whistle map, given that we are. Right, let's cut that back. You can see now the arrow on the HUD, you can see is the water pressure is now starting to rise, you can see the A shape. You can see the shed got some locos in it over there. Crew North shed, I think that is. Yeah. So, good reaction to the sounds. Chat. That's obviously very encouraging for us to hear because obviously these are uh, sounds that have been used specifically for this particular uh, this particular room, this particular local. Uh, there's a great dev diary if you've not seen it already, uh, and also not last week's live stream if you've not watched it already. It gives a really great insight into the, uh, the challenges of, of using audio, or sort of music, collecting, and then uh, using audio within. Development, um, and also the challenges specifically to Steam as well, because there were a lot of them, and the audio team have done a stellar job with this. Really, 
So I'm using my keyboard a bit just so that I can more easily get you some better shots of it. Ah! That broke it. Oh no! <laughs> I pressed the wrong button. Try again, man. Try again. How, uh, <laughs> how, how me and Matt can talk. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. I'm thinking more of a noise if you're actually in the foot plate or anything like that. It's basically oh, just yes. hearing it any other noise other than the local. So, yes. you're doing a good job in it. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, I mean, when you've been on the foot plate and you've, you, you, you're being close to a locomotive, um, even sort of standing behind it, the regulator fully open and um, sort of seeing in the window. Sometimes, yeah, your ears do start to pop a little and do, you know, do hurt quite a bit. They, they are noisy beasts and um, it, it's really, uh, it's really well done. I'm assuming, you know, you, when you're driving it, you know, I've had a few practices with this now and been helping out. It does, you know, you have that feel of the local bouncing about as you can see it wobbling there. Um, you know, you can feel it in the cab. The guy, the guy, the guy, sort of leaning out of the window as well, almost. I think that's that's again kind of harking back to a, 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 not a noise necessarily in older time, but it just feels very of the time, doesn't it? And the, the fact that you, you're kind of having to lean out almost is a very active uh, feeling of, of being able to drive the loco, as well as what you're actually having to do with the, in, uh, with, with the controls. Yeah, absolutely. And you'll see the yeah. focus, and we'll see the fireman. Um, picking up and doing stuff as well and part of the fireman's job was to look ahead as well and support the uh, drivers so you'll see the, the fireman looking ahead and behind as well which the animation looks really good really pleased to have us come together name plates are here as well so this is from Pulse um, yeah, not horrible name <laughs> 725 yeah they all they had very very interesting so the Jubilees had all different names um, there was, there was uh, I don't think there was one that was unnamed um, um, they, they, they're very. Um, I think some were named. Uh, some were named after places. Um, some were named. Names. Yeah. I'm just going to back off the power and let the uh, let the boiler come back a little bit because uh, we are go via Acton Bridge. Oops, I know this one. Uh, go via Run. Call. Go via Mosley. Go. Oh, we are non-stop to Lime Street. Oh, crikey! All right. Then. Picked a non-stop one anyway, so yeah, I'm going to need some power to get up the uh, the, we the Hello Weaver Junction. Uh, Jason, no, this is Series X. So as you can see, I put the frame rate counter on. I'm basically topping out full 60 FPS. Nice. Uh, and obviously we're coming up with some signals. Uh, We've got signals some here. Absolutely. I'm going to knock the uh, the train sounds down a little bit more, but I kind of don't want to knock them down too far because hey, steam engines and sounds—that's what we're here for. <laughs> that's what but we're here. Did you notice also the uh, the smoke there? On it's, it got deflected by the bridge. It's not that good. That was something that I think was uh, was mentioned. Was that I think when we were, when we showed some of the initial screenshots uh, or the uh, the teaser um, about the, the the way that the steam particles uh, interact with different things on the on the track, uh, and there's been some work that's gone into to improving that. Yeah, it's um, so yeah. There's a lot of work being done on the particles. Um, they're in a much better place now than they were um, when we first started showing them. They've gone through several iterations and you've probably seen screenshots with just about all those different iterations on. It's just how the development has gone. Um, so, uh, but no, they're, yeah, they, they're really in a good place now. The engineer has been spending a lot of time um, listening to uh, me droning on and others droning on and looking at videos and continuing to uh, refine and improve uh, what, he's, uh, uh, what he's got. The colour of the smoke doesn't change. No, it, uh, again, that would be something we'd look at more as, as you know, where we do a firing update. Um, we'd probably look at something like that. So at the moment, the smoke, it also doesn't respond to, like on a sunny day versus a cold day, to a hot day versus a cold day in reality, the smoke would uh, be a different intensity, different uh, opaqueness, opacity, that's the word. Um, and uh, that's not here either. So it's just this smoke all the time, it seems. Uh, old Davey, I did see you say about line time fences. Well, I suppose in the MC these days, you know, Line side fences wouldn't have been such an issue uh, back then. Uh, I don't think they, 
they wouldn't worry too much about fences and things like that along the track side as much. Yeah, we, we obviously wanted to show the uh, the route off in kind of relatively light conditions tonight. We might do some adverse weather uh, and maybe uh, a little show of what it's like in the dark as well next week. Uh, but we wanted to obviously show it in its kind of in its best form, which is obviously when you can see everything and see all the scenery. So uh, we wanted to, to focus in on that tonight. So we're continuing to 65 miles an hour, heading up the West Coast Main Line. Um, and uh, I think it's around just after Acton Bridge. I think we've a junction, so we've still got a little bit of a ways to go before we uh, we turn off to certainly what I consider the more interesting part of the route, if I'm really honest, uh, because uh, it's not just a straight line. Although this is the bit, though, this is kind of the racetrack, really, uh, whichever whichever way you're going. So if you when you're coming south, you hit, as soon as you sort of hit the uh, the you, you're coming down to Weaver Junction, you just kind of open the throttle and go for it because it's straight. A straight shot, a high-speed shot, all the way. Yeah, there are AI trains, Lee Killer. It's um, the 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 type. So one of the challenges with a timetable like this is, with only two types of locos, you're missing um, other trains that would fill out other aspects of the timetable. So rather than have ATFs doing shunting, for example, and uh, running trip freights, it's it's it does mean the timetable is lighter than it would be in reality, but it, it hopefully keeps it more appropriate as well. It means that there's room potentially for other trains to come in the future. That's not a hint, there isn't any plan at the moment. But it's kind of like one of the things you've told us in the past is don't fake it, leave a slot, and then put the stuff in with the new train. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're getting a couple of uh, questions about the, uh, the wheel runner as well. We get a close up, please. Bit I've been looking at that and I got a th I'm not seeing the fix on here, so I need to find out why that is, because it was. Oh, hang on, we're uh, we're jackhammering. There we go. No, we're still jackhammering. Let's wait until we get to a bit that's brighter. I'm, I'm noticing the Xbox. This is blurring still. So I don't know why that is. So I'm going to take that up with the tech team tomorrow, uh, today, tomorrow, and find out why. Yeah, it's one of the stations <laughs> flying through. <laughs> I think that was half a junction. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, when we get to Lime Street, we'll um, we'll show passengers. Yeah, we'll show you the passengers. As well. Yeah, as well. Yeah. yeah. As you can see, we've got the uh, the TSOs, and we've got uh, BSK here. I don't know if I've got. Have I got? I'm probably on the back end actually, the London end. I probably have the, um, yeah, the first, first corridors. Class. Yeah. yeah Is this the tell by the windows? You can tell by how the windows are seated, where how they look slightly different, you know, slightly further apart. Is this the blood and custards? These are the maroons. Maroons. Oh, one in two chance I got it wrong. <laughs> So all your signal boxes have names, as they did it would in reality as well. Yeah. So the safety's going, which is cutting out all of the other sounds. There's some of the wagons over there, look. Yeah, the covered With ones. With one of the one of the covered plank. ones. So the five plank has a number of different loads and covers and the like. Should we do some player question just while we're on this part of the? Yeah, sure. Route? Okay, cool. So uh, we gathered some questions from everybody in the community on our forum. And obviously, we're trying to grab as much as we can from the chat, but these obviously have been pre uh, sent through to us, so we've got them on our screens already. Um, quite a good one for uh, for Matt, given that we're playing on the consoles tonight. How will the immersion controls on consoles adapt to Steam Locos? Is there anything that's radically changed? So all of the normal controls that you're used to driving with just work the way you'd expect them to. But there is, you know, remember we added shifts um, with um, track with Rush Hour, I think it was, or TSW2? We added the shifts, so we got operation shift and camera shift. Um, what you will find is that uh, there is a new Steam shift, which is the A button. Um, and the A button allows you, if I go back in the cab, I can, for example, operate the large ejector and I can operate the drain. No, I can operate the drains. Um, I can operate the small ejector. Um, and I can operate the firebox. If I press the right buttons, it will work great. Right. There we go, firebox. So you've got a number of controls for, uh, for operating um, things in there which you can do for. Um, um, 
which you can do on there using the operation shift. Cool. Okay. Uh, M. Louis 100 asks, would there be a beginners, intermediate, or expert driving options? Um, there's only one, one driving yeah. option, really, uh, on there. Uh, so the idea is, the I, yeah, I guess the idea is that. Uh, Right, so I'll let you concentrate on that, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll sort of follow. I guess the idea is obviously we've got some uh, reworked tutorial content in there as well to try and sort of bring everybody up to speed on how um, how it, it needs to be operated. Um, if you are having challenges, then uh, we've obviously got a really great uh, community of people who I'm sure are really knowledgeable about how such things work. So I wouldn't be too daunted. Uh, there's plenty of opportunities. And we'll be to doing. We'll be helping you. That that, that that jackhammer noise you're hearing is uh, is not your local sets. Don't change the channel. It is a known issue with the Xbox. And it's not news with Steam. It's on all Xbox stuff. We have got someone looking at it. In fact, I've got two test builds to try at the moment to see whether or not they fix it. There's certainly, like in, um, you, if you drive into Edge Street, uh, Edge Street, into Liverpool Lime Street, um, there will certainly be times where you need you then run tender first back up. I'm not aware of anywhere you're running mainline tender first in the timetable. There's turntables everywhere on the route, so they don't need to do that. I think there's one because I've set the Is that? Remember which one. Yeah, oh, I can't okay. remember which one it is, um, but it's on a local service. I know that, that it's a local. So this is, uh, that was lower quadrant signals, we've got yep. upper quadrant signals once you come off the west coast main line as well. So it's colour light, lower quadrant and upper quadrant signals on it. Uh, Salonius16 has asked, if I'm ignorant of steam will I still be able to start driving? Yeah, yeah, the tutorial gives you a basic intro and then it's practice. Making a steam engine go is actually really easy. Um, yep. keeping, keeping it going, it going is, is the challenge and that's just yep. um, uh, a... Um, it, it's just practice um, and getting sort of experience and trying things out and so on. Cool. Uh, so, Great Killers asked, uh, what opportunities will there be for refueling, such as taking water and cooling? So, we've got scenarios which include that, um, and the um, well, we can't do refueling and so forth. I think in the service mode, all a lot. I think a lot of the services do take you over to them, so that if you run the service yourself, you can. Um, uh, you can do the refueling and so forth, but there's, there's plenty of opportunity to do that. Okay. Uh, and will we see root discs or headboards? Uh, there's no headboards, uh, just the names on the train. Um, root discs, I'm assuming you, that refers to the same thing. Cool. Oh, we've got a friend. It's another Jubilee. Jubilee. On the local. We off to Weaver Junction in a minute. Um. Will the whistle be quillable? Nope, it's just an on-off. But you can you can control the length of the whistle, uh, and it copes quite nicely with repeating, uh, or yeah. So you can control the length quite flexibly, but it isn't quillable. Um, SWR fan um, is asking about AI traffic, sort of off-route AI traffic. Um, but I suppose it's a more general question about um, uh, AI. Uh, services or playable services that start outside of the map. Uh, will those be? I saw. Obviously, we saw the um, the Euston to Lime Street mm -hmm. uh, uh, service. And similarly, so I the guess Chester that's true. the Chester Lime Street ones will be coming in and out as well. There's yeah. also a bunch of services which run Lime Street to Manchester. Um, so yeah, there's plenty of stuff going on, um, both in terms of the the freight and the passenger. Uh, PIS boards. Uh, I, I'm not sure how. Uh, I don't think there are PIS boards on appropriate. this. Line. No, I mean in the, the some railways. I don't, I've seen Heritage Railways. I don't know whether what they did necessarily in the Steam days, but um, some stations had like these. That they had a selection of boards, but I don't know of all railways. That, you know whether the Southern Region did it and the LMS did, and I don't know. But they used to have a selection of boards that they just used to put up for the passengers to say, "This is the next train." But I don't. I, uh, it's not. I don't think it's in the game, is it, uh, Matt? Um, no, no, no. I don't. I'm not. I don't. There are no PAS in there. Yeah. 
It's a good example of one of the the many share um, signal boxes, as we've seen several of them, and you'll notice they're, they're all fairly different. This is Weaver Junction, so this is the, uh, the world's first flyover, um, dating it as an engineering phenomenon. Um, and uh, we are, um, let me just gun it a little bit as I can kick it off the uh, safeties. Um, and yeah, we're, so we're taking the left run here, and you can see. Um, the bridge in a minute once it loads. Again, we're on console, so the loading distances are a bit shorter. Um, we're going here, and this is the uh, this is where that flyover where we turn off and the West Coast Main Line carries on. Uh, so Liam is saying, "What's the 25 on the HUD?" So previously, in diesels and electrics in the game, you've only got forwards and backwards, but this thing's got a a, a, a cutoff control here. Um, so as I move it, as I move the regulator, you can see that number goes up and down. So you know what what percentage cuts off you're on. Um, as well, so you, as well as forwards, you now know what percentage forwards and what percentage backwards you are. That's why yeah. that number's been added there. Yeah. There is wheel slip. Um, I will try and organise a bit of wheel slip in a bit. Yeah, accidentally. On purpose, of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's quite interesting the wheel slip because I've been having a go with it. It's quite. It, it, it's certainly you know if you're on a grade, you certainly you know you need to know. Uh, even in the dry, sometimes they put sander on got heavy load, you know, um, it certainly helps. I don't, I, I'm assuming this is coming out quite dark, must be on the TV the Xbox is outputting on, it's quite a bit lighter. Oh, hello. Oh. I, got, <laughs> I fell into the... This is my, my camera was going to the West Coast Main Line. <laughs> yeah. So this is Weaver Junction and we're heading up here. This is another thing, by the way, whoever wanted to put particles, put their face in particles previously in the game, no problem at all. Yeah, so the new particle <laughs> system doesn't um, really hurt your frame rate like the uh, the old particle system does. So it's not got the FPS impact that uh, the old one did. It's much much better. Uh, Craig, uh, we've, uh, Craig has asked about um, uh, layers uh, um, uh, being put on top of the roof. So Bronco has got completely blank. Uh, but uh, we talked about this at the start. Uh, this is kind of standalone. Time being, uh, there might be opportunities for things like rail tools in the future. That was what I was looking for. Uh, but uh, we don't have anything currently in, uh, in the plans at the moment. Uh, but there's, there's, there's a distinct possibility that something like that might happen in the future. Uh, nothing like currently layers onto this route as it stands out because nothing would be really appropriate. Someone's asked about um, head codes, and you to basically you just look over to a lamp bracket and you can put it on, and it'll actually tell you what your lamp bracket position is. And as you can see, I'm now Royal track. the Royal Track. Oh, hey, there we go. Oh, given the Jubilee is coming up as well, that feels very appropriate. Yeah. Uh, worth pointing out, we will be doing a stream on the, on the uh, I think it's the 1st of June, isn't it? Uh, the day after release, uh, where we'll be doing um, sort of a, a Jubilee run. That would be nice and fun, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yes. Um, okay, some questions from all. Vern, uh, how will in and out pilot working to be handled at Lime Street to and from the carriage sidings also turned in turning and servicing steam locos? They're all separate services, so you can do the bit that you want or just chain them all together, run them all, um, but it is a complete thing. So Lime Street, if you look at if we just have a quick look at the map, Lime Street doesn't have um, release junctions or anything on there. So when a train comes in, as this one has done, you can see that it can't get back out again. So another train will back up and couple up to it and then take the coaches away and then this train will then either run over to here and turn round or run up to Edge Hill, get serviced and come back for its next train. So that's all that sort of stuff is in there. Cool. Um, no dynamic, uh, no, sorry, are there any dynamic billboards in this route? I would imagine no, not. No, because no. they're not appropriate. The dynamic no. billboards are for modern and adverts. So yeah. Um, yeah. We did explore whether or not we could get advertisers to do some historic stuff, but uh, as you can imagine, that's a bit, you know, the first question you get asked is, huh? <laughs> I, I seem to remember, um, perhaps, uh, I don't know how, how close it's ever got to being, but we talked to Coca-Cola, I think, yeah. we about potentially creating some retro ads for, for Coca-Cola, but um, that would have been fun. The jackhammer sound you're hearing is an Xbox problem, not a Steam problem. Yeah. And it's a problem that we're aware of and are working on. I must admit, this is the worst I've heard it so far. It's typical, isn't it, when we're demo extreme. Whenever I've been playing this internally, it's been, you know, actually not happening very often at all. But uh, today, of course, it's doing nothing but driving me bonkers. Obviously, yes. Um, 
No, the fireman's not animated at the moment. It's well, it's animated, but it's not getting the trigger to make it do it, Crazy Killer. I'll show that when the next one, uh, because they're in the midst of doing some um, refinements on that, so the triggers have come off until they finish it. Yeah, uh, Trainiac uh, has asked about. So, is, is this? Sorry, before I go to Trainiac's questions, does this have um, rush hour passengers enabled on it? The uh, rush hour kind of volumes of passengers. I. Th I need to go and double check that. I think it's yeah, the, we've set the volumes hopefully appropriate for the uh, the time period and the locations. Obviously, crew is going to be quite busy. Lime Street's going to be quite busy, but the stations in the middle, by and large, not really. Um, so, yeah. uh, uh, but it, it is a whole new character set that have been built for this. And on the console, you're not getting the full sight of it because the console uses a, a reduced subset of the characters. Um, but it is a whole new subset um, from scratch, and um, you will see it. Um, you know when we show the show it next time on the PC. Uh, Derek's asked a good question: Can these particle effects be used on the um, um, oh, on diesel locos in the future? Yes, potentially. Now we've kind of got the hang of how this system works. Um, it's certainly something we can look at. I'm not going to put a time frame or any kind of promise on that, but it's definitely what we want. Can you lean out the window, Luke? Yes. Lean out the window. And you can use the controls even with hanging out the window. Can you, you can. You can look in and operate the controls as well. We made it up the steep hill. There we go. Lovely. Will this be available on um, off the rails bikes? Um, yes, you can uh, take your favourite diesels and drive them up here, or you can take these steam engines and drive them anywhere else you want to. There we go. Some fun and games for everybody. Uh, have fun with this on a Rosa, maybe. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing I also have noticed is I can see some double-decker buses. There's a lot of vintage vehicles as well. All new vehicles have been created as well, yes. All the road traffic is uh, is brand new. Some wagons in the yard over here. I think we're a little bit over the speed limit as well. It's Mark. all good. It's all fine. <laughs> so this is Runcorn. This is Runcorn, and we're going over the uh, the very very well known Runcorn Viaduct. Um, and uh, you see, there's some of the traffic down here. Look. Oh yeah, that's really cool. Um, and as we go over Runcorn Viaduct, you will see the Traversa Bridge. Ah, oh, we've caught it animating. So it runs that and that bridge runs backwards and forwards, carrying cars and so forth. Uh, and you're thinking to yourself, hang on, that doesn't exist. I know Run Corner and that doesn't exist. Well, it did here in this time. That, that was gone by now. And what happened, what exists now is this, which is the beginning of the new bridge that's cut, that exists today. So the, this route is demonstrating the, uh, the construction of, of the new bridge uh, underway at the moment. We're seeing history in action. That's yeah, so cool. Did. It's, it's, it's a brilliant, I mean, this is a brilliant time capsule for people who wanted to live I mean in the spirit of, in steam the spirit of steam and, and in the era of, of all things steam and it gives it gives a great you know I, I know lo loads of people who say oh if you could go back in time where would you go to and some people say oh I'd like to go back to the west coast main line east coast main line things like that in in the 50s and 60s when you know steam was uh, or sometimes even earlier people want to go back to but it gives you a really good sort of um, idea of what it would have been like you know and and, and how um you know uh, and actually the how sort of in some places where the, the railway was starting to sort of it was the very start stages of the railway start to get run down weren't they as well so 58 you know getting near the 60s you know it's, it's, it's getting close to you know um closures and, and things like that well this is kind of i mean this is kind of almost like Watershed, I guess, isn't it? I mean, I'm, we're talking to um, Joe, who does some of the articles for um, We Are Rail Fans, and this kind of we have an article plan which talks about kind of the decline of, of steam as well, and that's not too far after this period, is it, Jamie? No, it isn't. No, no. no I mean, you, you're talking so the Great Eastern Main Line steam finished around 1962, 63. Um, so we're only around a few years. Um, so about five years before steam was starting to be abolished at that point 
Um, but even as early as here in 19, sort of 1958, a lot of the older classes of locomotive, it was more of a standardisation. So if there was an older class of locomotive, um, to say that was that was dated from the 1800s, um, that this was the sort of time period where they were starting to get replaced by more, um, you know, standardised locomotives. Um, so it's, it's actually it's quite a very interesting time period. Um, to be Denton Junction we're coming up to now and it's one of the it's another really good moment of transition and, and, and a sort of a sign of the uh, development that's going on uh, on the route so in the time period in question and for quite a bit before and after this route is under a lot of modernization where the semaphores are being taken down and the color lights are going up Ditton Junction is a good example of where it's underway at the moment you know, that it's going on so you'll see we've got semaphores here uh, lower quadrants um, and uh, as we come into Ditton over, uh, I can power off a little bit of brakes on here, we're not stopping, but even so, uh, you'll see that there's these um, posts up here which have got nothing on them. Um, and that's where they used to have signal arms and they don't anymore. And actually, what you can see under here is, well, you know, these awful new gantries with awful new colour light signals on them. Darn the modernisation. Um, yeah. They were taking all the life away, and th that means that they didn't need those anymore. And in the photographs we looked at, we saw this, uh, these, these examples of when you know Ditton had was in this kind of position, and we thought that was a really interesting thing to sort of represent because it really showcases that that uh, modernisation that's going on. Because this is also not the not a far cry from electrification, because electrification was 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 just know, around the corner. That. Yeah, yeah, it was within within a few years. Um, and it's, it's quite an interesting period because it was it wasn't just a you know little bit of modernisation; it was a complete change. You know. Yeah. Getting a couple of requests for the whistle, Matt. Yeah, I blew the whistle. Blew the whistle. Nice one. Oh, we can't hear, unfortunately. So <laughs> yeah. uh, we're going to have to go by the fact that Matt is currently loving life, listening to all of this stuff. And we're just listening to the sound of our own voices, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> assume it's, we assume it's fantastic, judging by your reaction. Oh yeah. Uh, okay, so more. Uh, we got. Our well, I want to show something yeah, else off real show, quick show something because off, this yeah. is this is this was a very much a personal. You know, sometimes we add these little things in just because it's something we're interested in. Now, I've been playing steam loop, steam driving train simulation since long before the, even the likes of the Microsoft train simulator. Uh, my first steam driving train simulation, Jamie. What was it called? Oh, is it Evening Star? Southern Bell. But yes, same same ilk as um, Evening Star by Houston Consultants on the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. And it had a slightly different view because you couldn't really get in the cab like this with those games. So, um, the Southern Bell view. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh dear. dear. It's, um, it's, it's a little bit of, uh, of an amusement. It's not very useful if you're under an awful lot of power. But you know what? For those of us that like to reminisce, it's a cost of a camera, you know? It's uh, it's fun. So, uh... Yeah, they're loving it. Look at that. People are loving it. That's good. That's really good. It's those like, kind of little, little touches that make you feel like there's a lot of love that's gone into this. We know, we know that. We know that we've, we've said that a lot of times. And I know it's a little bit of a meme now, but this has really been a... Uh, it's been a passion project for the entire team. It's been a passion team. project. The, the, yeah. the whole team have been so engaged in this. You know, I don't want to ever say that the team are not engaged in a project we do, but so many of the team have been telling me about, oh yeah, I was working uh, last night for a few extra hours getting these extra bits in. And just like, it's yeah. just, you know, the amount of love and attention they've poured in because... You know, they just genuinely are so passionate about what's being created here. Yeah, I think everyone's really like. I mean, I know this this is, this isn't quite 100 percent the, the finished article, but I think everybody's really proud of what they've been able to achieve and push themselves to do with this. Because obviously, it is something that we we've, we've not done before um, on, on TSW2, and there have been a lot of pitfalls that we've kind of fallen into. But it, it's great to kind of see how all of that hard work has kind of manifested in something like this. Yeah. Yes, there are cow sounds as well. The audio team have gone. Oh yes. The audio yes, team have gone to. Cows. They, yes. We have moo cows. Oh, moo cows. Which are over here. <laughs> and when you come and listen to them, apparently you can't hear them anymore. 
There we go. We have cow sound. Right, we can move on. <laughs> move. On. move. <laughs> it's time to move. On. <laughs> I, I hope we've snuck a donkey in there randomly. Uh, I don't know whether the where, whether and where the donkey is. I need to ask the team. Um, I, I want it to be sort of dressed up as a cow. That would be great. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, question from uh, Wanterail uh, or Wanterail. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it. Uh, how much of the passenger? I think we've kind of half answered this before, but how much of the passenger time from 1958 will be represented here? Will it be every passenger service that ran around that time feature, or will some services left out be for, for future adults? So it's based on the timetable. It's based on, in fact, the the uh, um, developer who was building the timetable literally threw what he'd done and did it again because he went for he was able to go from like a 1962 timetable to a 1958 timetable which is quite different and he was able to get a more accurate so he threw everything away and started again um so that he could get it that way so it's um but it's not every service because we haven't got every train that you'd need every type of train that you'd need to do that so we are kind of abusing the jubilees into local services like the Liverpool Chester ones, but other, well, that was because otherwise it was a little bit barren. Um, and um, but that's it. So we're not we're trying not to use like the ATF for things that are inappropriate and the Jubilee for anything more than that. Um, so um, it's there's a nice mix of services, tons of different things to do. Um, and, uh, and yes, the AI can use the turntables. So turntables have been a, a sort of I want to say a tiny nightmare, but it isn't tiny. It's just been a complete nightmare getting turntables working. Um, and, um, ooh, costly. Yeah, another lovely looking signal gantry. It is, I, I mean, it's one that if you even... Oh, so this is it, Speak, isn't it? It is, yeah. I love this gantry, it looks so good at night. Look at that. It's uh, a lot of signals. Yeah, I mean, it, it's quite amazing. If there, there's some gantries, I don't know if you've seen some, some people might have seen some pictures way it's just you look at a gantry i think it was must have been of like king's cross in the in the early days and you just look at it and go uh which signal is mine which, which one is mine where am i going um because it's yeah it's you know obviously before color lights came in that was that was all they had you know um either that or no signals at all which they found out that went badly wrong um Look at this, I don't want to call out this. One, this is the sort of thing that the team put a lot of effort into. It's like, how does this look like it's it's a used area, not a flat one? So all the effort's gone into the ground texturing, all the cluttering, the detail, the lighting of the engine shed, and really making that, um, and bringing that to life. So that's Speak. Speak speaks for itself, really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm expecting a few more of those, Matt, before the end of the stream. Oh, yeah. So someone else, by the way, said, can you run out of boiler pressure? You will run out of boiler pressure numerous times, I tr trust me. Um, one of the most difficult things you can do in this game is start from live stream. Because it's a 1 in 94 standing start. It's yeah. fun. When you when you get when you, when you perfect it and you get to the top of the hill at 25 miles an hour with slow 10, you'll know you've learned to drive a steam engine properly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's been quite interesting because I've had to learn some bits as well, haven't I, with this? And it's it's been it's it's quite it's, it's very it's very I would say it's a very realistic drive. You know, you do feel you know gradients do make a difference. And you do need to. You really feel it, don't you? It's the this is what I say when I said at the start. We just wanted to focus on the driving experience because this is like nothing you've driven before in TSW. It really isn't. Yeah. It's um, it's uh, it's it's a real challenge to drive it um, accurately, and it's. Um, it's not a set in forget it. I'm watching the boiler pressure as I drive, keeping an eye on what's going on with it and adjusting the regulator accordingly as well as the speed limit. I'm not really doing anything with the cutoff because we're not speeding up and slowing down. So it's, um, but it's, there's so much going on. I will that call out actually the distance that we just, so that was a distance signal we just passed there. Yeah. So in the last time we did semaphores with all the Transpennine and distance signals in that only accounted for the next signal, which is not correct. Um, they account for the next block of signals, which might be more yeah. than one. Like, for example, if you've got a station that's got a home signal, uh, sorry, a, a home signal coming into it and a starter leaving it, you can, the distance signal will reflect the status of both of them. So if either of them are red, essentially, then you get a, a warning at the distance. Whereas the previous way that the signals worked, you'd only get 
the you'd get a green on the um, on the distant because of the home being there, and then you'd have no chance of stopping because suddenly you find 200 yards later you've got a red light. So that's fixed, and all of the distant signals on this are now fully managing the appropriate sized blocks. What that means, though, is that you may well find that um, you're driving along. There you go, some more of the old cars down here. Um, yep, you may you. well find that you're driving along, and you see a distant which is on which is telling you caution and your next signal is a, is a, uh, a, a home or something which is off and so you'll need, you'll, you need to be careful and don't think oh actually um, it's um, um, is, so is the, was the distant wrong I'm going to speed yeah. up and then suddenly yeah. you'll find that red one block later or something so yeah. you know you really need to pay attention to those distance yeah, the, 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 the way I think of it is if, you, you, if you're coming into a station you'll have a set of signals, if you come out of a station you'll have a set of signals, which will be your homes. So if you remember that your distance, you know, if your distance is off, that basically means that through the station it will be fully off, in other words, you'll be fine to clear through. But even though your, your home signal entrance signals into the station might be clear, so you come through, your distance signal's off, you, sh you shut the regulator, it starts to break, you see the home signal, you think to yourself, oh, okay, I can speed straight through the station, but actually the section going out of the station will be red. Oh, I'm alright, that'll be Love right. the bonnet. There you go. This, uh, I don't, I don't really think we're going to see them in this in this run, but uh, we've got some uh, suitably suspicious um, men in raincoats as well. Nice, that's what we like to see. Can't, can't miss the men in raincoats. <laughs> There was such, you look at any pictures of Liverpool Lime Street, pictures of steam in the 90s, that's what all the men were wearing, the sort of these brown full length coats and the, mm. uh, and the hat, and the, uh, it's, uh, so that's one of the things that, that is in there. Like I said, not, on the console that. it only shows a subset of the characters. This station's actually disused, so it's um, been suitably um, uh, left to rot, basically. It's got boards up on the windows and um, some junk on the platform, and uh, so that's a, uh, that's not there. We are now entering Edge Hill. So, um, the world of track begins now. <laughs> I say that's beautifully sad though, isn't it? The, the disused, uh, or the, 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 the station that's been left to right. It feels quite poignant. It, it was a part, it was the start of bigger things to come. You know, 58, you, you, you know, beaching was not far off at this point as well, you know, so... For those that don't yeah. know, Jamie, explain what you mean when you say beaching. Yes, so beaching, uh, or is known as the beaching cuts, was um, uh, a chap um, who was brought in... Um, Sorry, to... Jamie, just one thing. Uh, this is what I mean. This distance is on. There this is go. because I'm going to get held up coming into Edge Hill. You will notice at least one or two um, green signals between here and there. Sorry, carry on, Jamie. There you go. Um, and was brought in to uh, see the procedure or to see how how stations and railways how well they were being used you know passenger numbers freight numbers things like that and it was all written into a directory um, because the railway couldn't afford to keep going at this point um, uh, and unfortunately um, a huge amount of railways um, got shut um, in some places, some some it was just stations. Others, it was full branch lines. A couple of main lines shut. Um, there was actually two plans. The first plan was quite devastating, but it's a good job the second plan didn't come into consideration because, because the second plan, you just have no branch lines left in the UK. Basically, um, it was quite a, a, a very you know it was a worst come to worst sort of thing. Um, but yeah, it's it. it I mean, it, basically, the beaching cuts started the heritage railway movement. Without beaching, a lot of the railways would still be part of um, mainline. You know, would still be part of you know. Um, well, there's two ways of looking at it, isn't it? Because one of the other ways of looking at it is that, uh, and it's controversial, but beaching saved the railways because yes. actually they were making such a huge loss at the time that actually you were they were in danger of completely going. Um, yeah. And what by, what he did was he trimmed it um, and was able to sort of salvage. Now there is the argument that um, salvaged it, they get it too much. But hey, yeah. we've still got railways today, and there is definitely a valid argument to say that um, 
as unpleasant as it is for us fans, we have to acknowledge that we still got railways, and we need to acknowledge that. Yeah. I mean, it's prob probably the car, wasn't it, more so that... Yes, it was, it was a time period where the motorways were starting to be built as well, so you had the argument that that was the way forward. Um, but funnily enough, if you look at it now, I don't I think that argument would be different. Um, so I've just been given 500 yards notice of a red light. That's what that distance was telling me, that distance was telling me about. So if you had ignored that distance and carried on because of the green lights and obeying the speed limit, then you would have been um, possibly in trouble at this point. I say that because the first time I did this journey, I forgot about that, went blasting through here, and then when I got to the end and ran the red light, I sent a, uh, a message to the signalling team going, what's going on with this? Why did I suddenly get on? And they looked back at the video I recorded and said, well, if you obeyed the signals, we'd be good. <laughs> Lesson learned, <laughs> me told. You know what? I would love to see that team's exchange. I would love to see the reaction. It's, it's easily, I must admit, I've been trying to get used to the brakes. So I, I've been trying to, do I, I, was, I sort of, I was on a local service, and I thought he was getting to like 0 0.7, I'm doing 60 mile an hour. I thought, oh yeah, no, fine, I'll, I'll be able to stop in that. And I get, I get it, put the brakes on, and I go flying through about 30 mile an hour, and I'm like, uh, yeah, that probably didn't work. Um, yeah, so this is another thing, the mineral wagons are unfitted. Um, some of the other wagons are fitted brakes, and yeah. so on the uh, worst winter scenario, half of your train and more than half of your weight is unfitted. Yeah. You need to think about your stops. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in the olden days, they were all unfitted. You had a full train. You know, you think of it, if you've seen some videos of the old, you know, in the old days, they're all unfitted. Um, it was quite. Uh, Quite an amazing, you know, feat uh, to try and do. That you, you know, you had to communicate with the brake van to say that, you know, please put the brakes on. If not, I won't be able to stop. So this is Lime Street. We're in the cutting. And what can we and see? And we've got a uh, tender first low car coming back out of Lime Street, going up to Edge Hill. Yeah. It's very dark in here. I was gonna say, is that the, I can't work out which, which one. That, is it the? That'll be Jubilee coming up. Yeah. 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 Start run down here. Right. Okay. <laughs> You're gonna be about twenty minutes late, Matt. I think. Uh, yeah, I'm fine with that. It's, it's, it's BR solid. days. It's fine. This is this is where the railways. Uh, this is where the decline of the railways happened because Matt was twenty minutes late for a service. <laughs> yeah, we're just uh, late, Matt, for the the, the end yeah. of the seat. It's usually my blank. fault, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's let's talk quickly about uh, some of the uh, the new things that players can experience with um, with Spirit of Steam. Things like the uh, motion blur, the uh, particle effects, all of that kind of thing um, that are obviously fresh and new for, for Spirit of Steam. Is there a plan to uh, backdate any of that technology to any of our previous releases at all or is that going to be a we'll have a look and see what the preservation crew it's going to be something do. the preservation crew look at in you know uh, where well, you know now we've kind of got a good handle on where things are uh, for this the first job really is to make sure we can make sure new content is using it yeah. um, and make sure we're consistently there's one of the things sometimes we have we do have an occasional tendency to do is to bring something new in and then not carry on doing it um, for various perfectly good reasons, but frustrating nevertheless for players. So I, what, what we want to do is sort of make sure that before we worry about what happened in the past, that all the new stuff is continuing to benefit from it as well. Um, and um, and then, you know, in the fullness of time, we can then see what we can do with press script, but I'm definitely not making any kind of promises on that front. Because some of these changes, like the wheel blur one, for example, is a per-model change where you've got to do modelling work to redo the way the wheels are set up. So it's not it's a non-trivial. It's not just we flip to switch or something like that. Yeah. 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 No, I, th I'm, I would imagine that was probably the more complicated one to to implement of those two. Um, okay. Cool. Uh, and then um, I'm just going to the end of the uh, the questions actually uh, that we've got from the the community that were asked beforehand. Are industrial services included for freight? Industrial services. I'm not quite sure I follow the question. Uh, do, you, do, you, do you mean like shunting round yards? Industrial I guess yards? so. That's, that's what I would, that's No, what the, I would because the ATF wouldn't do that. This is an example of where we wanted to keep the ATF fairly authentic. So a lot of it is through freight. 
Yeah. Stopped. Because I pressed the wrong button. I was going to say, did we mean to stop or...? <laughs> yeah, that was it's intentional. A um, a I thought we could enjoy the safeties going yeah. off for a bit longer. And it's a good opportunity for you to show how to recover from a stop as well. Well, I'll release the brakes and put the power on. It's uh, We're in the dark, unfortunately, so it's uh, not, the, <laughs> not quite the great opportunity. Um, but no, basically, when you've stopped, just release the brakes. Remember that you need to put the brake handle in to release and you need to put the um, your large ejector on. Uh, make sure you always leave your small ejector open. Um, one of the other things actually we've got on this is, um, no, I'm getting excited with the regulator, is we've got this um, steam lock. So this is the steam brake uh, here, so you can separately control the steam brake and apply the locomotive brakes independently to the rest of the train. Uh, and you can also put a lock on so that when I apply the brakes, okay, I can't remember exactly what I used that for, but you can use that, so if you've got the brakes on, you can... Um, you can release them, apply them separately. I can't remember. I did have that working the way I wanted it to, and I can't remember what I did with it now, and it's really useful. But essentially, <laughs> you've got independent control, and you've got the steam lock there, so it is quite useful. Yeah. Even though I'm not making a good selling job for that, but it, it, <laughs> trust me, it's useful. It was a thing that I did this one it time. It was a thing that I really did, good. and it was yeah, awesome, and uh, moving on. Uh, so, Northern Rail has asked the price of this when it comes out. Um, I can't remember all of them off the top of my head. UK twenty four ninety nine. Uh, I think that means that it's twenty nine euros thirty four ninety nine dollars. I think if I've got my conversions right. But if you go to our Steam page, you'll have the conversion in your current um, in your current geography, and that will be what it is across all of the different platforms. A few people are asking why it wasn't a pre order discount. Being really honest with you. It was a choice between putting something like a pre-order discount in there or making the price more expensive because, as I say, there's a lot of time and effort that's gone into making this uh, route um, and uh, I think it was a straight choice between the two and it felt like a pre-order discount was probably the better thing to get rid of. Yeah. Coming into Lime Street, look at that. And you get the echo in Lime Street as well, don't you? Yeah, you do. Brilliant when you're climbing out. Um, there will be there will be collectibles, Matt. I assume. Uh, yes, there are collectibles. There are four collectibles. There's um, posters. Uh, I, can't, I can't remember what they all are. There's braziers that you can light. Uh, there's, there's a number of new collectibles that uh, there are different types than you've seen before as well. So it's quite fun. Uh, there's not pre-order available on any of the other platforms other than Steam, as it stands. But it releases on the 31st of uh, 31st of May, uh, and traditionally consoles we would release uh, or would be released at sort of mid-morning time UK time, and then uh, Steam Epic will be afternoon because it's when uh, it's when Valve and uh, and Epic sort of respectively uh, start operating uh, and they can put the manual take the manual pre-order uh, off and, and put it live and here we are at lime street yeah, look at this. now we've had a, there is a shot of this in one of the uh, the articles that we put live i think it was last an article last week um but we'll do a little tour of lime street so that you can see it the also the interesting thing is, as you can see with Lime Street, there's a lorry, a little van there with all the goods. So you can see this platform is basically very wide and has a direct uh, uh, road access. And in the steam days, that was one way that they used to load some of the uh, some of the goods onto some of some of the uh, um, goods wagons and bits and pieces that they were there. So you can see there's like barrows and bits and pieces. And you see how wide some vans and cars could actually drive down on the platform here. Bananas. Bananas. Plenty of bananas. Just Moggy was wishing it was full of ice cream. Is there any particular reason for bananas, or was that just a, a quirk? Of well, they of used the... to have banana vans. Uh, there was actually right. a van. They actually had a van, and they were were specifically for bananas. So they had uh, in in the railway days they actually had specific vans for specific things so there's refrigerated vans um there was meat vans fish vans um banana vans i can't remember the other ones um but yeah they they and that was what they were called because I, I vaguely remember when we were talking about us freight that was one i was i can't remember it might have been on a stream with you matt we were talking about might have been clinchfield 
Okay. Banana, banana wagon, was it or something? I can't remember. I, I'm probably talking out of my backside. I can't remember. I can't but remember. I will. It was before breakfast, uh, so therefore I will struggle yeah. to remember it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it was a long time ago. It looks it looks brilliant. Um, really of its time, I think. Uh, as you can see, obviously the the advertising in the background as well looks really cool. Looks of its time as well. As train simulator driver said, don't mention fish fans to Matt. <laughs> I was setting the fish free, all right? <laughs> Is there a few comments about the AI traffic and the um, the amount of uh, traffic at the station? I think we've answered this a couple of times before, but Matt, it probably bears repeating. Um there is, there is obviously AI traffic on this, probably not as much as you would see in real life. That's because these are the amount of services that these two locos did on this. Well, room. yeah, this is the, the services that are uh, that are covered by the trains that have been added. There would be a lot of other services, and there'd be quite a lot of freight running up and down the line as well. But they'd be run by tank engines uh, and smaller trains. So rather than abusing the ATF, uh, we've left space so that um, should another DLC happen, no hinting here, um, then um, the uh, there is easy space to drop it in. One of the things that we that you told us very clearly when we did the extra 375 services to make up the bulk up the timetable on um, Southeastern High Speed was that you didn't like that and you wanted the authenticity first um, and um, so we, we're heeding that, we're listening to you um, and um, we've left the space for the appropriate trains to be added later. It was the Fruit Express, thanks everybody in the chat, the Fruit Express at Clinchfield. I wasn't too far off the banana wagon, I think that sounds better. <laughs> there you go. One hour to okay. do a forty-minute yeah. service. I think I did well. I still got a gold medal. There you go. Look. Yeah, oh, class, that's not too bad. Class that three one four fan oh, is from Liverpool, it's... and is very excited, which is obviously great to see. We love people who are from the areas that we represent in game, excited about the kind of things that we we make. Yeah. That's really good to hear. Thank you. Cool. Matt, is there anything you want to sh anything else you want to show tonight? Uh, obviously, we don't want to leave people on tenterhooks for for things that we could show for, for tonight that we we want to show next week. Obviously, we're going to be focusing on the AF next week. Uh, we're going to be perhaps doing a couple of like we do some bits in the night, some adverse weather potentially, so you can see what that's all about. Um, is there anything else you want to show tonight? I think we'll leave it there for tonight, um, and we'll show the ATF um, on the next one. And uh, one of the things I want to do is perhaps run Time for Scouts at some point, um, so that I can show you moving around Edge Hill and show you loading uh, loading water and uh, and so off. Um, cool. So uh, yes. Okay, we'll go into some more details next time. If you've got some requests, what you'd like to see for next week's live stream? Oh, we've I was got... going to show Will Slip. Let's just restart this, and I'll show you a bit of Will Slip. <laughs> okay, fine. There we go. That's a good uh, one. If you do have any requests of what you'd like to see for us next week, though, we have got a thread up, which is a question thread at the moment on the forums, on the suggestions forum. Just use that and chuck in any suggestions that you have for things you'd like to see. And we'll sort of add that to our list and we will aim to do that for you next week if we can. Uh, so, yeah, just jump in uh, onto that thread and, and the comment. Uh, like yeah. to see what you come up with. Uh, we also have, or we're also going to have, a Let's Make a Livery stream which is themed around Steam as well next week. Uh, so that'll be fun. We'll be looking at the um, the five plank wagons and Cat will be doing a, or Cat already has done, it's pre-recorded, spoiler, uh, a, uh, a great job on the, uh, the five plank wagons as well. So uh, we'll be showing that next week as well, uh, as well as another preview. Uh, dates and times, TBC, well the time you probably pretty aware of we do we do stream at the same time every time we stream we the days TV, predictable. Yeah. yeah keep an eye out for ralph on tv next week also a little interesting fact so there's been a mate of mine that's been studying the west coast main line uh, now an interesting thing about crew is that if you could see there was some tunnels uh, matt i think you missed where where the tunnels were um but they used to be so you can see it ducking down there these are actually the freight lines that used to duck underneath crew, so the freight would avoid crew uh, entirely, duck underneath the station, and then come back up underneath. Uh, so there's there's the freight tunnels. There you go. Are those operational? Yep, they're used as well. Yeah. Nice. So the freight would duck under and then come back up. 
Yeah, yeah, so the freight services that will show with the ATF, they they kind of um, edge hill to Crew Bassford Hall. So they they run south through here and they end up sort of down here somewhere. So you can see where the freight is down here. So it's kind of like, it's slightly different at start and end points. Oh, and you can see the, uh, obviously the well-known crew signal boxes. Uh, what, Crew North Junction? There you go. Yeah. So, yeah, lots of, lots of custom build boxes. Cool. We're getting requests for turntable next week, so we'll yep. see if we can do yep. the turntable next week. In. Yeah. Uh, show, so, so, show, so, uh, we'll slip and then I think we'll call it there for yes, tonight. We will. Yeah. Uh, and we'll leave you hanging for a little while until we give you a taste of it for next time round. Uh, Kingstream, uh, you don't have to be mad that you're late. This is going. This will be on YouTube pretty much immediately. We finish. Yeah. Don't worry about it. You can see everything in action. You've not missed anything. As soon as we finish, which yeah. will not be too far away. Just in case you missed it, if you want to change the head code, the, the the lamp codes, you just literally click on them. Same on the tender on the back. Thanks for the suggestions in the chat. If you can go to the forums and suggest them on there, it means that. There's a lot. There's there's more record of them being there, and it's not reliant on me noting things down frantically while we're live at this point. So if you put them on there, I will check them and we will go through them. Uh, if you put them in the chat, I will probably miss them. So uh, put them in. Uh, put them in the forums if you can, please. On the suggestions forum, there is a thread for questions. Use that as a spam me for bits and pieces as well. Oh, do we have a list of... This might be quite... This is actually quite a good question. Uh, maybe for when... Oh, okay, we'll slip. There we go. Nice. So what I've done there is I used the Steam Loco Brake to release the... Uh, release the Loco Brakes, whatever, so that I could get some draw while the thing still had um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the weight on the uh, brakes there. <laughs> Uh, patch notes in this update. Yes, there are some patch notes actually. Uh, quite a significant amount of patch notes. Uh, we'll go into what those might be because uh, there are some ones that actually are improved to kind of all routes. Um, we've got our Xbox uh, community, sorry, Xbox beta community and the Steam community testing those out at the moment for us. Uh, and we also have a few preserved uh, preserved updates going out as well, um, as well as a few other um, odd bits and pieces here and there. So it is a pretty hefty update that comes with Steam as well, patch update that comes with Steam as well. So that is something to look forward to as well. And off it goes. Off it goes into the distance. We wo we wave it farewell for a few days until we see it again, or you can see it again on the live stream. Sorry, yeah, Terry. Yes, that is a different name, engine. Let's just go and have a look, see what it is. Yeah, that there is a question about actually. There's someone asked about how many there are in the game because it isn't the complete set. Uh, this is Thunderer, which oh, is that's a much uh, better name. Seven oh three. Um, so there are. Let me go and get my my numbers that the uh, the setup guy sent me. There are 137 AFs and 26 Jubilees. Na oh. uh, Jubilees all named and numbered accordingly. All, all different names. All different names. Yeah. Every Jubilee oh, had a got name. Catch them all. Got to catch them all. There, I, love some, somebody, I want somebody to go out and grab a screenshot of every single one of them. You can do it, everybody. We need to come up with a little thing with a tick box. Well, actually, if, 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 if we talk nicely to Chris, um, he's actually talking about that. I just need to supply him the list of what there is in there. So I'll try and get that done tomorrow. Um, yeah. And uh, so that you have a list of all the ones that are in there. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah it's, uh, it's, it's, it's absolutely uh, brilliant. We need to create a forum thread, Jamie, of uh, let's see if we can tick them all off. And people yeah. need to put a screenshot in there of the uh, the, the names in question, and, yeah. uh, and then we'll uh, we'll tick it off as we go through. We'll do that. Okay, uh, shall we finish up there, guys? Let's get the cameras back on. Uh, tomato train. Will the wind affect the steam? Yes, it will. Right. Uh, let's put the cameras back on. Which is that one? That one. Hello. Welcome. Oh, you're there. You're there. You're there. 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 There you go. Hello. Hi, Jamie. How's it? It's that way, isn't it? I need to look. No, no you're down. I'm down. You're down here. I'm down here. <laughs> and Matt up there. Nice to see you again. Uh, 
Okay, thanks very much, everybody, for tuning in tonight. We hope you've enjoyed it. I think, I think, and I might be a little bit uh, premature with this one. This might well be the most viewed stream that we have ever done really? on Train Sim World wow. 2. Um, and that might be a little bit premature, but I'm willing to bet a fair amount of money that it is. So thanks, everybody, for watching at home. We hope you've enjoyed it. As I said, if you don't take anything else from this stream, we really want you to, to get across to you guys that there's a lot of time and effort that's gone into trying to represent the experience and the steam experience in the best possible way we know it's something that is very 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 unique uh, and we wanted to try and get that across with with this uh this route and obviously the the locos included within it um the team have done a fantastic job uh, of, of replicating that replicating the feel and the experience of steam and we hope you got that from tonight's stream obviously this is not the last time you'll see it before it releases on the 31st we'll be doing another preview next week um need to confirm the date uh, we are hoping it's going to be Tuesday uh, but uh, there might be a couple of bits and pieces that, that sort of move around so keep Tuesday free pencil it in your diaries uh, and we'll confirm uh, I think tomorrow on the Ralph and TV uh, uh, forum thread it is available to pre-order if you wanted to on Steam um, now that is uh, that is only on Steam there's no pre-order on other platforms as of yet uh, but it will release on the 31st I think that's everything admin wise so. that we need to go over if you've not already check out the um the dev diaries for audio uh check out the teaser video i mean you've seen a pretty decent teaser tonight i think uh and also the uh, articles that have been put up on the website because there are quite a few at this point going over the rolling stock going over the audio side of things and also talking about um the the locos included as well as some of the challenges that we've had to come across uh, or had to overcome to bring it to to, to you guys uh, at home so anything else Matt or Jamie before I wrap this up no I can't think of anything no I think that's just about it yeah brilliant okay well thank you very much everybody for watching at home thank you very much Jamie for joining us your knowledge as ever is fantastic to have on a and passion is fantastic to have on a stream like this thank you very much you're welcome thank you Jamie and cheers, Matt, for being driver tonight. Uh, Jamie will be driving next time round. Uh, I am. So I'll be driving the F. Yeah. You've set. You've set an extremely. Uh, I'm going to say. I'm going to say it's a high bar, but I don't quite know, Matt, how you would judge that bar, or Jamie, you would judge that bar. But it seemed pretty good from my end. <laughs> uh, so thanks very much, Matt, for driving. Obviously, for all the answers you're able to bring to the table, we will showcase it again. We'll showcase the AF next time round, and we will do so uh, with. Uh, your suggestions which you can do so on uh, you can suggest on the forum thread which is on our forums believe it or not uh, under the suggestions uh, sub forum so seems like the, about the fifth time i've said this have a lovely evening everybody uh, we hope you enjoyed that and uh, we'll catch you again next week cheers everybody oh, thanks for watching bye-bye